Live at the Velocity Conference. This is O'Reilly Media's premier show around web performance, mobile performance, web ops, DevOps, and uh, user experience design, kind of all holistically under one. This is the modern, the modern architecture that people, the top leaders are, are, are using, and this is innovation. And this is theCUBE, this is siliconangle.com's exclusive coverage of O'Reilly Media Velocity Conference. Um, theCUBE is our flagship program. We got the advanced instructor soon from the noise. We're talking to the, the alpha geeks, the tech athletes, CEOs, presidents, uh, and startups. And our next guest is James Siegel, the president of Edgecast. Edgecast.com is your site. Um, great entrepreneurial story in your company. Um, you guys, uh, six years ago, started your company and grew it, and now on an amazing ramp, all because of software, all because of some intellectual property and some smart uh, founders and a great team. Uh, James, welcome to theCUBE. John, it's great to be here, thanks. It's nice to hear somebody call me smart. <laughs> well, you told me off camera you went to Harvard, so they don't, you, know, you, know, you got to be smart to get into Harvard. Uh, our co-host Jeff Frick went to Wharton, so you know, we know he's not dumb, so you know, you got to be smart to get into those schools. Um, but now, in all seriousness, you know, the modern era is something that we've been talking about here inside theCUBE at variety of events, whether it's VMworld or it's whether an IBM show or here at Velocity or Strata, and everyone is now realizing pretty clearly, there's pretty much a mandate, this is not even prescriptive at this point, that the cloud, mobile, and this new environment of real time is the future, we're here now, and they're building out, right? So, so there's a lot of pressure on folks to really kind of rethink and re-architect their businesses, changing their value changes, changing their, uh, their infrastructure, changing their applications, and ultimately driving business value. Um, with, what I find interesting though is your company um, is at an area that has to innovate or die because you're in the networking business, content delivery, application delivery, you know, uh, CDNs, some call it, um, but that market is under a lot of pressure to, to be high performance. In a way, there is no SLAs because it's 100% available or you don't have customers. That's right, yeah, um, we're, we're their insurance policy, right? <laughs> so, so that's kind of the standard table stakes, 100% uptime, which is great, uh, unlike the cloud, which is now getting to an SLA kind of discussion. But let's, let's, let's talk about what that means right now in the content delivery business, because when you have applications, Facebook just launched their, their Instagram video today, we had coverage there uh, at the Facebook headquarters with SiliconANGLE, but this is, the, this is the new normal. Applications, I need delivery, it's not just hosting images on the network, this is about a new way to think about it. So, you guys are powering uh, uh, applications and, and companies. You guys built a system that's modern and innovative. Talk about what you guys have done as a company and the product that you have that's, that's so successful. Sure, uh, and thanks for that intro. Uh, you know, Edgecast is an interesting uh, animal. We are both a software company, a SaaS platform that runs in the cloud, and we're a network. So we provide a, a huge amount of infrastructure, bandwidth, and delivery for all kinds of websites. More than 6,000 customers use us today. We power about 5% of the internet. And what's uh, most interesting about how this works is you have to be able to support every single format of file, every piece of content, every kind of scripting paradigm, every kind of website innovation that's running out there, and then support it on every dri driver device, PC, uh, mobile device, IPTV, uh, IP-enabled device anywhere. And so that means that we have to be you know, incredibly cutting edge. What we've done is we've distributed our servers in a very logical way that's relevant to today's internet. So uh, a lot of the legacy CDNs have uh, a highly distributed uh, server infrastructure, maybe, I don't know, 130,000 servers, uh, some massive waste of, of, of infrastructure deployed very inefficiently. And that worked fine during the days of uh, Earthlink and AOL and Prodigy when you're having to dial up and access the internet. But in today's centralized internet, where peering fabrics and interconnect exist, you want to be at the main aggregation points and you want to have massive storage uh, compute capacity in a real sort of uh, agile, uh, scalable cloud infrastructure, and that's what Edgecast has built. So we have these uh, large super pops, and each of these have massive cloud storage and cloud uh, caching software that we built, that we call it Sailfish, that runs a very uh, centrally uh, but nonetheless distributed cloud, and that's what powers the websites for our customers. So we cache content proximate to end users and deliver it low latency to end users. We accelerate dynamic websites, and we do so with uh, our an application delivery network, and that allows us to take any kind of dynamic request and make it go fast, and that uh, gives the performance benefit to these websites, and performance is everything. You mentioned uptime and availability. We can't go down. 
We're the insurance policy for these big websites. You know, a lot of the uh, traffic um, has been around, a lot of companies grow with their legacy providers, but one of the interesting things is, um, with all the security concerns right now, mm. I don't want my traffic on this network that's peering with that network, or I got this service provider and that service yeah. provider, I got a lot of cost routing decisions, a lot of costs, and a lot of, you know, that's all normal networking stuff, okay? Let's take it to another level. Uh, the business value now. The business value is, okay, I'm a company. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to have uh, protections just against security. I don't want to run my traffic with everybody else. I want a private, I want private networking, but I want all the benefits of a CDN. Um, how does that, how is that trend um, evolving with you guys? Do you solve that problem? Do you have, an, you have a solution there? Because that, people don't mind paying for value, but so they think, here's your public option, here's your private option. What are you guys doing in that area? Uh, so we've addressed that problem uh, pretty head on. We have a new solution called Transact. It is our dedicated e-commerce network. What we've done is we've built a custom network specifically for internet retailers. And it is uh, completely segregated so that uh, if other customers are social media customers like Twitter or uh, big banking customers or large uh, political customers or um, uh, high profile uh, websites are on this, uh, and they might get uh, attacked or they might have up uh, big spikes that have to do with maybe uh, a, sort of a Twitter bomb or something like that going off. Uh, we don't have to worry about that affecting our e-commerce customers. So you imagine you're a big internet retailer, you uh, have millions if not billions of dollars transacting on your website. You want to de-risk every element of your delivery to make sure it's rock solid and up and available. So being on a shared network, uh, that has everybody I and their mother running traffic is just a, a risk you don't need to take. We've carved out this uh, dedicated e-commerce network and we've even locked it down so that during the holiday season, we freeze it. Uh, that means no changes to the network, complete code freeze, uh, no uh, events that can really upset or interrupt traffic. And you layer that with all our technology, our application delivery network, our front end optimization, our caching, and that gives a very secure, segregated, private network for internet retailers, and these are the folks who've figured out how to make money on the internet, right? They're not sitting there trying to say, hey, we'll give it for free and, and find some way to monetize this later. These guys figured it out, so they need to protect their, their traffic. So a lot of the storage paradigms are now creeping into networking. Software-defined uh, data center is a big hyped up word we've been covering. Software-defined networking, a lot of virtualization, a lot of tech involved. Uh, what did, and you guys have a software as a key part of your platform and key part of your value, but what did you guys do specifically that's just not just caching? What did you guys do to modernize, to create that innovation. Why are you, what, what's the big secret sauce or architecturally thing that you've done? There's probably three things that we really focus on as main technology differentiators. Number one is Sailfish. It's the name of our software that runs at the edge. It's a combination of a distributed file system and a really intelligent caching platform built together. And this gives all the features and capabilities that our customers enjoy with self-service, uh, you know, APIs, and, and all the great configurations, uh, uh, makes it available at the edge and does it very efficiently. We actually, uh, we have our own cloud running at the edge on Sailfish, and it is a highly distributed uh, infrastructure in uh, uh, the software and data center that allows us to have commodity hardware running on smart technology and makes us very capital efficient. Uh, the next thing we did is a, is a network topology that is uh, relevant to today's internet. You know, we talked about the highly distributed model that doesn't really work anymore, so we have these large centralized pops that give us tremendous capital efficiency. And then finally, we use a, 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 a ro a load balancing technology uh, that's IP based. So we can pinpoint where an end user is based on where their IP address is as compared to based on where their DNS server is for their ISP. And that means our service is a lot more accurate. So James, you're the co-founder. Um, talk about, um, on a personal level, you know, how you feel right now. As you started out six years ago, you got over 200 employees, 250 employees and growing. Um, get some great revenue growth. Um, what's, what's up with the company? How do you feel and what's the next, st next step for you guys? Well, personally, uh, I feel like I'm a thoroughbred running the uh, Triple Crown. Like I'm sitting here in the middle of the Preakness having the best time of my life. This is what I trained all my life to do. Uh, my partners and I, uh, this is the third business that we've built together. We've been uh, in the web space, in web hosting, in app hosting, and now in CDN. And uh, we like to solve problems. We like to deliver value. And we figured out a way to address a real sort of problem in the marketplace. There was a gap. There weren't enough providers solving this problem for customers. And so we're really excited. Uh, it's been phenomenal growth, to your point. Uh, you know, we've grown from you know, 20 million to 40 million to 70 million to 100 million, and, and we keep growing. And uh, the fact that our business is profitable in a space where you never find profitable companies. I mean, uh, basically fourth year of profitability, it's unheard of. 
uh, we're just excited. The, the potential is there. We, we clearly are committed to making this uh, one of the biggest companies in the space, and we're just really excited about what we're doing. Great entrepreneurial story here at Velocity Conference. Again, you get the founders kind of run their company, which I always say, keep the founders around, they're in charge. But really the software and, and, and the architecture you guys put, real modern, innovative. Congratulations, uh, James Siegel, the uh, president and co-founder of Edgecast. This is theCUBE, this is our flagship program. We go out the events to strike the ceiling from the noise. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.